when a patient comes to me with a neuroendocrine tumor, the first thing that I say is like, take a deep breath because it is so complex and there are so many nuances. So I typically explain to my patients that, you know, you have a low-grade tumor that's very different from a high-grade tumor, if that's the case. And then I, I tell them, don't worry when you think about the word cancer, neuroendocrine tumors tend to behave a little bit less aggressive, so it's very different when you think about a patient with a pancreatic adenocarcinoma. Or I, I, I illustrate to my patients with Patrick Swayze as having a, the traditional uh, pancreatic adenocarcinoma versus Steve Jobs, even though Steve Jobs is not with us anymore, you know, the course of the disease was much different. So that's the first thing that I try to do with, with, with my patients is to um, direct their expectations and, think, and tell them that they probably shouldn't worry that it's a disease that's much more indolent and they don't have to necessarily feel that's going to be the next, next last Christmas that they'll have with their family. That helps a lot in taking a little bit of the anxiety um, um, away. Then I try to explain that some tumors uh, will secrete hormones and then the diarrhea that this patient is having for perhaps five to seven um, years is actually related to their cancer. And then if I control her cancer, his or her cancer, that is going to be much better. I also try to explain to them about the flushing um, and then they can all um, take care of, at least initially, with a simple hormone shot. I say, I joke with my patients, it's a hormone shot in the, in the butt, and then I can make you um, much better, um, and you can potentially, hopefully, go back to your uh, normal life. And I have to say, it's fascinating to see, uh, once we get some of the symptoms under control, how m much more functional uh, the patients become, and you know, as kind of a rebirth for them. Neuroendocrine tumors are becoming very common as a matter of fact, is one of the few um, um, cancers that are growing, uh, that are rising in incidence in the last few years. You can argue whether it's because we're doing a better job in detecting versus there is truly an um, um, uh, increase. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, what is interesting with neuroendocrine tumors because you had these vague symptoms for so many years, you know, can it start with a cramping here and there or the flushing turning red or um, a little bit of nausea and vomiting, but comes and goes, it can take up to five to seven years for you to be able to detect the disease. And in many cases, you only detect the disease when the disease has already spread to the liver and becomes something more obvious. Um, so many patients already come, they come to us with advanced um, um, stage four um, disease. Um, the symptoms that they have, if they are non-functional, they can just have pain, or if it's in the pancreas, they can eventually uh, grow and lead to obstruction of the bile duct, and then the patient turns yellow and come, goes to the ER, and that's when they find a, a mass in the pancreas, if there's no disease as well, uh, uh, um, elsewhere. But in patients that had disease that has spread to the liver and have um, um, symptoms or uh, functional tumor, you then starting to have what's called carcinoid syndrome symptoms. So carcinoid syndrome um, can affect uh, some patients that have functional tumors. Um, the main symptoms of carcinoid syndrome um, can be diarrhea, which can be up to only three, four times a day or all the way more than 10 times a day. Typically water, it can be explosive. You can also um, have what we call flushing, which is turning red in the face and the trunk and feel, feeling warm. Um, other things that one patient can have is um, crumping and Depending on the, the lo location of the primary, atypical symptoms such as bronchospasms can also be uh, presented. The most um, common triggers for carcinoid syndrome are um, emotion, stress, um, alcohol, and some um, foods such as chocolates. Um, so patients should be aware if they're going to have, if they know to expect any of these things and if they need to um, have an extra um, treatment for that. When I mean by extra treatment, I have many patients that say that they carry um, short-acting uh, octreotide, which they, they call um, rescue shots. So if they know that they're going to go for a dinner and they're going to eat a lot of foods, they're going to trigger some of their uh, symptoms, they will just um, use the short-acting uh, octreotide to control that and affect less their quality of life so they can enjoy whatever event they're um, going to.